Hello everybody, my name is Martin Jarrett and I'm a Senior Research Fellow at the Max Planck Institute for Comparative Public Law and International Law. For all the aficionados of international investment law out there, I have some bad news. There's a phobia inside this area of law, what I call the phobia of judicial expropriation. Put simply, arbitral tribunals are terrified of making findings of judicial expropriation. The good news is, there is a cure. By the end of this video, I'll show you what that cure is. First, to the diagnosis. According to the Cambridge Dictionary of Psychology, a phobia consists of two elements. One, an irrational and persistent fear of a particular thing, and two, that fear often leads to irrational acts of avoidance. For our purposes, the thing is judicial expropriation. I'll explain why later arbitral tribunals' fear of it is irrational. For now, let me turn to their irrational act of avoidance. For arbitral tribunals, their act of choice is requiring that the investor not only prove that the court took its investment, but that process of taking also involved a serious procedural illegality. You might ask, what's irrational about requiring proof of a serious procedural illegality? Look at any clause on expropriation in an investment treaty, there's nothing requiring that the expropriatory act be in some way illegal. The quality of the expropriatory act is not important at all for the purposes of generating liability under the standard on expropriation. What makes an expropriatory act wrongful is that it causes either one, the investor's loss of title over its investment, or two, the complete or substantial devaluation of its investment. Although this requirement for a serious procedural illegality does not have a doctrinal leg to stand on, arbitral tribunals will not let it go without a fight. It has proved very effective in avoiding the making of findings of judicial expropriation, which they fear for two reasons. The first of which is this. Unless there is this requirement, arbitral tribunals will open the arbitration floodgates to claims arising out of ordinary cases where the court applies the law, that application means that the investor loses, and then the court orders a remedy that practically means that the investor loses its investment. A proper understanding of the word cause can dispel the fear of opening these arbitration floodgates. In law, only voluntary conduct qualifies as causative conduct. And because of this, most domestic judicial conduct cannot be expropriatory because it merely involves applying the law. And in any society dedicated to the rule of law, applying the law cannot be labelled as voluntary because it is required by the rule of law, specifically the requirement for congruity between official action and declared rule. Thus, that reason for avoiding judicial expropriation is an invalid one. But, you say, some judicial conduct consists of making the law. Is judicial lawmaking potentially expropriatory? Yes. Because judicial lawmaking is not required in the same way that applying the law is, I say that it's voluntary, therefore making it causative conduct. What this means is that judicial lawmaking can be scrutinised in international investment law. And because this scrutiny looks a little like international repellent review of domestic decisions, here we run into the second reason justifying the fear of judicial expropriation. But scrutinising judicial lawmaking does not equate to international appellate review. While the former process examines whether a court changed existing law, appellate review looks at the correctness of a decision under the applicable substantive law. So again, this reason for fearing judicial expropriation is an invalid one. Considering that the reasons justifying it are invalid, it follows that the fear of judicial expropriation is irrational. So, in the immortal words of FDR, First of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is... The fear of judicial expropriation. 
We should embrace judicial expropriation without a requirement for proving a serious procedural illegality. And we'll be fine if we do so, provided we recognise that, one, applying the law is not causative conduct, and two, reviewing judicial lawmaking does not involve the assessment of the correctness of the relevant decision. This is my medicine for the phobia, but I'm really interested in what you think. Whether you agree or disagree with my thoughts, it'd be great to get the conversation started on what judicial expropriation should doctrinally look like. Thank you very much for watching.